Richard Martinez enjoys how calm it is on his Tornillo ranch. He picks pecans as a hobby, but he never lets his guard down. If they were run here on foot, you know they were illegal. He says his ranch isn't as secure because... This is where the border fence abruptly begins in far east El Paso County. It's about eight miles or so east of Tornillo. Because they, they, they can go over this wall easy. Over it, under it, right now around it. Because uh, it, it ends right there. You can see it from here where it ends. He says he worries those crossing over could be dangerous. It's not going to stop everybody, but it, it'll, it, it, it's a deterrent, and that's exactly what we want. As you continue west to San Elisario, you see the same style of steel mesh fence. Residents live just yards away. I think it's kind of ridiculous because it's like only a wall. It's not going to do anything. The closer you get to El Paso, you start to see more chain link and barbed wire fences that supplement the steel fencing. It continues all along the border highway. The fence then goes to the Chihuahuita neighborhood in South El Paso. There, it's up close and personal. Alberto Paulo says decades ago, 50 people would cross over together any given day. Now, he rarely sees anyone. We were getting roughly 10,000 illegal entries a day. Former congressman and one-time Border Patrol Sector Chief Silvestre Reyes also remembers when border fencing was sparse. 24 years ago, he deployed Operation Hold the Line. Border Patrol agents lined up on a 20-mile stretch from Anapra to Isleta and literally held the line. We had a, a, a fence back then, but it was famously called the tortilla curtain because it was in disrepair. It wasn't uh, a hard structure like we have uh, today. Further west, the fence continues along Paisano. Then there's just a chain link fence near the Rio Grande. This point right here is known as Monument One and it's right at the boundary between US and Mexico. And really the only thing separating the two countries is this crack in the cement right there. There's no walls whatsoever. A Border Patrol spokesman says this area is considered historic and that's why there is no fence. Mount Cristo Rey is also not fenced off and Reyes says it's because of the terrain. It would have cost too much to put fencing there. That government cost-saving measure does result in easier foot access from Mexico into the U.S. Instead of parking a vehicle on the border, agents wait near the Cristo Rey trailhead. About a mile west of the mountain, fencing continues near the Sunland Park Anapra area. This resident says she's not bothered by undocumented crossers. For me, there's no problem. Um, sometimes the Border Patrol, they're around here in my house I'm looking for you know people that cross over. Like, very close, um, but it's not a problem for me. The style of fencing here in Anapra is a little bit different. It's steel columns that you can actually put your hands through, as opposed to the steel mesh that we were seeing a little bit further east in El Paso. Now, this style of fencing actually continues west all the way down to the Santa Teresa port of entry. There may be other parts of the border, uh, maybe selected areas where uh, additional fencing would be required or necessary. The, the big problem areas in El Paso, I think we've already addressed them. $16 million per mile, according to the Government Accountability Office, and at least 50 of them in El Paso County, already up, separating two neighbors. Mauricio Casillas, ABC7.